Hey, welcome to episode of Chad's Beer Podcast with me, Chad of Chad's Beer Views. And this week's guest is Rod J. Beer Ventures. What's going on, man? What's going on? I don't know why I did the finger guns there, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm always pointing over here. Like, yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> uh, so we just did a review of Orval, um, which was pretty good. I'll put a link to that down there somewhere. Um. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to show the the people at home. If you're watching the video podcast, this is Rod's uh, channel. So, uh, when did you start? Like 2015 or so? Uh, March of 2015. Wow. So be wow, mm -hmm. ten years next year. Yeah, I'm at. Uh, I started October 2008. Wow, you're no G. You're no. They call yeah. me no G. You're no G. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I was just looking up your channel on Social Blade. Yeah. And uh, there's this huge spike. Yeah. You went from 4,000 to like 44,000 views. Did you get a a video so, that go viral? Like a short or something? From the tricks of the trade, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I started doing some different programs. Um, that was one there that took off. That That was the biggest one thus far. I think that's like 34,000 views on that one. So mm -hmm. I do a live stream every Thursday night at eight o'clock with me and my buddy Todd uh, Mal from Perfectly Me Crafts. Usually we'll have other guests mm -hmm. on there a couple times here and there. And what I started doing is I like get opening to the show where I get like a stand up comedian who's cracking a joke like about craft, some way about craft beer because. Oh, uh, I think I, I've seen I, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So I love having people come out there because I think we have to be able to laugh at ourselves even as we go through, we try to find these different craft beers, right? Because, you know, we're, we're beer nerds and all that kind of stuff. So I like to see people mock and have fun with it too. And this guy was just hilarious. I'm like, well, I'm going to open with that one. Mm. And then I end up cutting shorts off of the ones that I enjoy and really liked out there. And so I put this one out there and just started flocking and people were coming to it who hadn't seen them. So good comedian. His name's right there on the label too. So you can definitely yeah. check him out. And then, Started doing that with others as a program I use that basically can go through my live stream. I put the live stream in and it cuts videos out for me and says, review these. We think these might be good. So I do some with the comedians. I do some with our segments with us talking about stuff. And mm -hmm. they've all started to take on different angles and everything. So, yeah. See, That's I think you, you, I hate, I don't I hate to say this. I don't want to be the, you know, the um, wet blanket here, but you, you might be in uh, IP violation because like if you're just copying and pasting it without doing like a reaction or whatever because i've seen other channels where they do that mm -hmm. and like they get a, a copyright strike or whatever it's like you can react to anything like if you as long as it's like i like there's a um a video like there's so many videos where it's just it's some viral video and like it's just one half and like that or it's like the person's face in the bottom corner sure just going like this as they're watching and i guess that counts as a react react video <laughs> right right but um anyway um i'm drinking i'm all out of beer so i'm drinking uh bourbon for this podcast what are you drinking uh it's a pretty good size pour on the bourbon there but i am actually drinking a uh fiera nevada hoptimum right now triple ipa so 11 nice. percent abv and for those that haven't seen it there's a look at the bottle itself 2024 that must be uh that must be a new one. I remember they did a Hoptimum double IPA a couple of years ago. Well, they do a Hoptimum. It's the triple they do every year, but it's limited release. So this year has actually been hard for some people to find it. Even people out in California haven't been able to get their hands on it. But one of my local spots, I ended up getting the last six pack they actually had available at the time. Um, but it's good. It's a good triple with Sierra Nevada. You know what you're getting. It's always pretty solid. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So uh, can you give the viewers kind of like a of the basics, you know, who are you, where you're from, mother's maiden oh. name, last <laughs> word or something else? <laughs> um, I mean. Blood type. I guess, yeah, right, yeah. So, I mean, I, I started the channel back in 2015, and it just came out of a, a thing where I kind of got into beer, and it was actually something – uh, my wife has suggested me doing because she was big into watching YouTube back then. I didn't really watch YouTube that much back until like I did the channel and 
She was I, sorted, like, I sorted your videos from oldest to newest. Like, oh, okay. It looks a lot different here. Well, you know, age will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, started sharing the story, but you know, now I'm actually in the Baltimore area. So <laughs> originally grew up in New Jersey, but then went out west after going to school at WVU. I say west, but it was Cincinnati. Um, been out there for a number of years. Got into the beer scene, did a lot of beer events, volunteering, did a lot of the Cincinnati Beer Fest type stuff, met a lot of people in an industry, and one thing led to another and just started kind of getting into it, did some home brewing for a bit, kind of like doing that for some fun. Then I got kind of more into wanting to tell the story around beer. And my graduate degree or undergrad degree in college was in journalism anyway. And so mm. for me, it was kind of like being able to tell that story and then with that being, when I got the journalism degree, the emphasis was being advertising. So then it's like, well, I know how to market and all that kind of stuff too. So it just all came together. And um, when I came out of college, most of the time with an advertising degree, you had to go to New York or LA. Didn't really want to do that for one of the ad agencies. And years and years and years later, social media comes along. And it's kind of like, I kind of like that. Once I started getting on YouTube, so I started YouTube, the blog, rajbeerventures.com. Started right. building a following on uh, Twitter, which is now X, Instagram. Now I'm doing stuff on TikTok and all. one thing just snowball to another, to another, and then started making connections. And next thing you know, I'm just out here doing stuff and getting ranked like Fee Spot. I think I mean, one, that's one of their top 10 beer video, uh, beer channels to watch. And then just had a second article written about me here in Baltimore for the beer stuff I'm doing. So it's just one thing leading to another. You just keep turning, turning screws where I can. What was that? website you were just talking about the second the second most popular uh the fee spot has a site like for um fee top, spot fee, feed spot f-e-e-d-s-p-o-t oh. they rank out they have a thing where they rank like top youtube beer channels and they do top beer blogs and all oh, kinds okay. of different media for different topics and so they had actually had me ranked in there as one of the top 10 in there as well looks like um, you have to you have to sign up. You can't. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they find, they find links and add people in there as well. So mm -hmm. it's not like you need to argue like that. And supposedly they have people that kind of in the industry that kind of watch the different stuff. But like, I think number one out there was mm -hmm. craft beer channel, I think, and that, or either craft beer channel or Greg's that one of them was one and they were one and two. And then there was also like Simon was on the list and a lot, of, a lot of the beer people you, you see a lot of times are right out that there. So, yeah. I saw I saw you had this on your uh, community tab. You did this interview with Canvas Rebel magazine. Yeah, that was the second piece that was just written about me that was released. Uh, I think it was released last night. So I kind of was it a, that like a followers. like a podcast or no? It was the interview. They interviewed me because they went they wanted to do a piece about what I'm doing in the beer mm -hmm. world and kind of getting my story behind it. And they actually reached out after i had another one from voyage baltimore here in maryland i did it first and they kind of reached out from that piece and kind of wanted to tell more of my story and stuff so i was like cool i mean all it's exposure funny is like, good exposure like inner like magazine interviews or whatever like like the one i'm just like it looks like they only ask you like two questions and it's kind of like you know we're so used to listening to like three hour long podcasts you know like, yeah. <laughs> like two questions like it, it, was it a, like a like an interview like this where you or or was it just like text like did you no they it? no they sent me the it was, it was more than two they sent me the questions and i just had to respond to them i think it was like i don't know maybe like three or four or five something like that but mm -hmm. they kind of send you the questions and and they give you the open format to kind of respond to them and then they go ahead and publish it out there to share with their following and their base and people that come to the website yeah it's funny yeah. you mentioned that you had a degree in journalism or because um, when I graduated high school, originally I went in, I wanted to be a comic book artist, but I uh, wasn't very talented at that. But I was always pretty good at writing. Mm -hmm. So like, I went to a community college for art for like a year and like I really stunk. And uh, <laughs> I switched my major to journalism and I actually had like a talent for it. And after I graduated, I actually worked as a beat reporter for like, you know, two years. Oh, this, nice. is in, this is in upstate New York, kind of in like this small county kind of you know, um, about an hour, hour and a half from Albany. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I was covering, you know, like fire police, you know, stuff like that. It was, it was kind of boring. I was still living with my parents at the time and I was still working as a cashier at the supermarket on the weekends. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, Jared was not only pay the bills by himself until he lets you get like up to a big level. <laughs> yeah. And I had like AOL dial up. I had to get yeah. like my own phone number in my in my room at my parents' house. Yeah. Because remember, uh, remember like old AOL, like you had to actually connect your computer to like a phone line and you hear like that. Yeah. That sound. <laughs> Yeah, I almost, I almost at one point I considered upstate New York because uh, coming out of high school, Ithaca was offering me a scholarship, partial scholarship, come out there to do track and stuff. That was a shot putter in the back of Sprinter in high school. But I've been in New Jersey growing up. I knew how cold it got up there in upstate New York, and I was like, no, just yeah. not in my, I'm not in my temperament to go up to that temperature up there. No way. <laughs> well, I mean, New Jersey and New York have. Very, very similar climates. I mean, well, it's you only... get cold, but you don't get the blizzards and stuff like they get up in that area with the snow. <laughs> uh, that's, that's more like out by Buffalo and like mm. like on the Great Lakes. Yeah, okay. the lake effects now, like like Syracuse, like uh, Ithaca, like that's pretty central, like on the Finger Lakes. Um, it's funny, my sister actually lives not too far from there. Well, she lives in Binghamton, but okay, anyway. Um yeah, it's funny. I've I've been I don't know if you've been noticed, but like because I used to do, I I mean I didn't call it a podcast at the time, but like long long time ago, like I would interview other beer tubers, but it would be like 10, 10 or twenty minutes, and I'd split it up into two different like a twenty minute video. I don't know if you remember YouTube, like pre twenty twelve or so, like everything was limited to like ten minutes or less. Oh wow! So like any, okay. any video that went over ten minutes like seemed like super long, you know. <laughs> or you have, to, you have to split it up into multiple parts, you know? And like now, like 10 minutes is like just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. Back I then, think, like I said, I, I didn't do too much with YouTube. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know anything about YouTube back in 2012, really. So it was, mm-hmm. yeah. I was yeah. What inspired you? <laughs> what inspired you to get on, on YouTube? Oh, my wife. Like I was saying earlier, my wife was the one because she was, she was watching YouTube. I wasn't, but she mm-hmm. watched YouTube and, she thought I could come on here and do the beer stuff and share some of the stories and mm-hmm. people would be interested, which I thought at the time was kind of a silly idea because my thought process was if I'm not drinking a beer, why would I want to watch a person drink a beer? Right. But <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm like, if you're going to drink a beer, I'm going to get thirsty. I'm going to want a beer. And if I'm at work or something, I can't have a beer, but yeah, she was, you know, she was right. And it ended up working out. And, uh, I get people that even watch the channel don't even drink. They just like to watch and just learn. And sometimes there's their other half or spouse might be the ones that actually drink or some just enjoy the entertainment because with the channel, I've taken it to a point now where I add not just the beer reviews, but like beer news, beer facts. And then on Thursday, when we do the happy hour, it's kind of mm-hmm. more of an entertainment type show. We drink beer, but the beer isn't the main focus as much as kind of all the stories and the fun that we actually have on there that people can come in and laugh and get ready for the weekend. Yeah. This is a, I, I did a live tab. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. A lot, man, you guys go for hours, like three hours, four hours. There's we one can. that's like two hours and 51 minutes. That's a short one. Yeah. So do you have, you have other beer tubers on there? Yeah, I sometimes it depends. Usually it's myself, Todd, and mm-hmm. Mal. Uh, we're kind of like the lead three. And then we'll have on occasion other people that I'll invite to come on. Like we'll have Dave one for Beer Front, the Alkanas, and Shane's Craft Beers right there. Shane's Craft right. Beer Reviews joined us. Um, I'll have other people sp- spontaneously that'll be on the show and stuff. But mm-hmm. it's funny because I literally had, we used to start the show at 845. And we wouldn't right. get done to around 12.45 or 1. Yeah. And it was like, kill me the next day. And Todd, who gets up early like I do, because he's in Indiana to go to work. He's in the same time zone. And so I was like, well, let me cut it back to 8 o'clock. Then we'll be off by 11. Mm-hmm. And we still can have stuff running. And it's like, and when we go to off, people still are asking us not to go off. They, like, they still want to sit there and watch. And we'll, we'll leave and we'll still have some pretty good numbers of people watching. So depending on what we're doing and the fun we're having, it's just a good time to kick back and relax and you know we'll do jokes we'll do different stuff about beer tied into like popular culture sometimes we'll talk about different things like the funniest movies you remember like last week we were talking about summer movies we'll talk about like, your favorite cereals sometimes just different things in the crowd will interact with this and we'll share mm-hmm. some good times and someone will be like i remember this one time i did blah 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 and this happened you know it's kind of like it goes on off to another tangent yeah it's funny i was gonna say that reminds me of i think the original 
whatever the version of that Joe, I don't know if you would know Joe D. Oh, I've been on, yeah, I've been on Joe's shows. Good amount of yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. He, he basically kind of pioneered that, you know, virtual happy hour, virtual pub, whatever you want to call it. Cause I'm, he was actually doing beer reviews before I was. Mm -hmm. Let me actually, let me start this by oldest. Uh, he must have he must have nuked some videos. Because this says twelve. Let's see. So this says twelve, May 29th, twenty ninth, twenty twelve. Yeah, he must have deleted a bunch of videos because I started in two thousand eight, and I just remember like seeing him mm -hmm. before I started. I have to, I'm going to get him on the show. Yeah, Joe's a good guy. Joe, when I first started, I was seeing Joe, and I would see Greg. And then I would see Simon. Um, yeah. And so I would talk with them after points too. I didn't talk with Greg as much as the other two, but like Joe became friends with out there and went up going to his show a number of times. And then Simon, I talked to here and there in the chat, some kind of stuff. Never been on with Simon's show, but that mm -hmm. got me into actually watching a lot of the UK type show, which is funny. When I first started YouTube, most of my fans were coming out of the UK. And I was telling my wife, like, I'm in the wrong country. Nobody in yeah. America is watching me. Everybody's watching me in England, <laughs> but in America, nobody's paying attention to me. So yeah, that's yeah. how it is. You know what? Yeah. Um, actually, let me. Uh, if you can vamp for a sec, I got there's a uh, Excel spreadsheet I want to show you. Or I, I don't know if you saw last year I was doing the top twenty beer tubers of the month, mm -hmm. and then I did you know obviously at the end of the year I did the top twenty beer tubers of the year. Um, I keep it as a spreadsheet. Let me find it here. So I'm, I'm actually in the pro. I'm I, I'm I'm going to do that tomorrow. It takes mm. like an entire day. Like there's there's really no way to automate it without unless you're like a master um like coder. Like if you know how to write code. Yeah. And also, I mean, like if you if you know socialblade.com, you can like yeah. interact with their um what's it called a um uh. Uh, man, I forget. I used to. It's funny. I used to work actually in IT, but um, API. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Okay. So you can, uh, if you pay for like the premium membership, you can like you can automate a lot of that stuff. And um, all right. So here's here's what I wanted to show you. So I don't know if you know this, but like last year, like I said, I was doing. This is the 2023 standings. Mm -hmm. So you can see, like, they're sorted. So this is the. I think it's like the top 50. Um, let's see. And then like if you like it, so I have it sorted by month, but if you go all the way to the end here, you can see. So here's on the year, like Simon Real L guy, you got like 5.3 million views the whole year. Right. Craft Beer Channel, about 2 million. And it kind of drops off after that. And uh, let me see if I can find yours. So if I sort alphabetically, because you're under Rod. Okay, so you had, man, you only had 26,000 views last year? Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, you, yeah, I mean, I, before, <laughs> see, here's the thing with YouTube that gets skewed, because once you start putting shorts into the mix, which I was never a huge person doing shorts, it starts yeah. to skew it up, because those views get counted into your number, right? So, yeah, like, you're talking about the views I got now. A lot of it is because I got back into doing shorts and stuff, and that ends up bumping up with the numbers so far. So I was doing more of the long form type mm -hmm. content, you know, going, you know, at least over that minute or two minutes, whatever, um, yeah. and making those videos. And so usually on average, it was between two to 2,500 maybe views a month or whatever. And then I wasn't doing like some months, it'd be like maybe five or six videos and others, it might be like 20. So it just depended on different times too. But yeah. There's a, there's a couple like really, popular beer tubers quote unquote that mm -hmm. like i actually left off the list like there's this one guy where if you go into his channel even though it says so and so beer reviews or whatever mm -hmm. like the first thing you see is like him just like eating snacks and drinking gatorade and it's all individual reviews of uh like, like basically whatever items, he's having yeah. for lunch and i'm just like that's like how like you're not a beer tuber even though it says like the name of your channel you know, is beer, whatever. Um, right. I kind of put them under like beer adjacent <laughs> or beer tube related because gotcha. there's no way to like to distinguish the views for snacks and Gatorade versus the, the views for actual beer reviews, you know? Right. 
Or uh, there's this one guy. He, um, I think, Bruiser. Or, yeah, I'm gonna. Call, I'll call him out. Um, yeah, Craft Bruiser. This dude. I think he's in Denver, and mm-hmm. he just copied and pasted a TikTok from a John Taffer, who did uh, I think Bar Rescue was his show. Oh, with the pour the beer and put the yeah, paper. she was yeah. going how to pour with the napkin. <laughs> yeah, and he got like millions of views on that, and I'm just like that totally. Yeah. Oh. Give me one. I can't. I I can't hear for some reason. What just happened? What just happened? Okay, now I can hear. Check, check. Was yeah, I can hear you. Did you hit a mute button or something? Because I like. I couldn't no, this, hear part of it. This, okay. This mic is like so sensitive. I just like hit okay. the table a little bit. Like the, <laughs> I've had this mic for like, I don't know, since 2015. It's funny. I went, like when you started doing beer tube, that's when yeah. I got this mic and it still, it still works really well. And it's funny. Speaking of mics, that mic that you have, mm-hmm. I had one. I don't know if it was that model. I don't think it was that model, but it was like one, it was definitely like the same manufacturer, like with the led lights and all that. Mm-hmm. And I had it for like a month. And it broke. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> and I ordered another one, and then that one broke. Oh no! And yeah, I was fortunately I was able to get my money back on both of them because I bought them through Amazon. Yeah, I forget, I forget the name of the the company that makes that one. Well, but this like, one. I, Go ahead, I had it because, like, I don't know if you've seen my Tuesday night beer school, or you know, my girlfriend Christina. She's on, you know, at least once a week. She's over here, and we do a beer review together. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I needed a mic that was sensitive enough that would pick up both of our voices, and so like I I bought that one or one similar to it, and it actually worked pretty well. But then it just just broke on a dime. Oh, so wow. I'm back to using this mic, and I just if it's too quiet, then I just boost up the volume when I'm editing. Gotcha. Yeah, this one here is a, a Hyper X. So I actually got this through my day job from work um, mm-hmm. because we have a program there where we can get different things. We get like awards type stuff and you can cash them in for stuff. So I'm like, I had an Arazi for a number of years and that one kind of crapped out. I need another one. And I was like, let me see if they got a mic. I went online and looked for mics and this comes up as like the number two mic for streamers and our company ended up having it. I'm like, well, I got this for free. So best price ever. Yeah, can you what what is your day job if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm in the I'm in the financial area. So um I'm a, a financial wholesaler. So yeah. Of beer? No, financial. <laughs> no, no, markets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> beer wholesaler. wholesaler. The first yeah. thing that comes to mind is like beer distributor. I could I could I could take what I know from financial. If I was to be a beer wholesaler, easily apply it to it and just change the product. So I know the wholesaling mm-hmm. process and all that stuff. So, yeah, but no, I deal with financial stuff. That's, that's interesting. Cause like, I need like a financial advisor. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> there's no shortage of those in Florida. That's for sure. Cause that's where all the older people go to retire. So they go down there to help them a lot of the time. It's funny. Let me bring up uh Joe D. I don't know if you remember Mark mm-hmm. He's right here. Um, yeah, I actually met I actually met Mark in person. I went down to Atlanta one year. Oh, really? I actually met him down there. We had no, he came to Cincinnati, and we had beers out of Mantry when I met him. Yeah, I remember uh, at the time he said he was like a financial planner. At, he is. Yeah, he's yeah. a financial planner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's down I, in I, Georgia. He was area. one of my favorite beer tubers, and I think like YouTube like nuked his channel. He doesn't know why, but it did happen. Yeah, YouTube just. Canceled it. He tried to find out, and he just he does a photography channel now because he likes to take oh, yeah. a lot of photos. But yeah, but yeah, that's one of the big things. Nobody just a mystery for Mark. Like he doesn't know why it well, happened, but they did it. Going back to what we were saying earlier, I think it was copyright thing because if, if you watched his show, he would always have, you know, commercial music at the beginning of the end of the videos. And this is in the early days of YouTube before they had. um you know, AI just scouring everything for copyrighted material, yeah. you know, and I, I've, I, I've seen um, so many channels like get nuked or uh, get like, maybe not, not get nuked entirely, but like videos where they um, used, you know, somebody else's IP just get totally. Let me, uh, let me bring this one up. There it is. 
So I don't know if you know, like like my other channel, which is much, much bigger than this one, is called GigTube, mm -hmm. where I do videos about, um, you know, DoorDash, Instacart, Amazon oh, Flex, okay. Uber, Lyft. So like I do like the same thing on that channel where I do like I keep track of all the gig tubers. Mm. And uh, so is this dude riding with Zilla last year or two years uh, for a while. Like he was just like um, regurgitating like super um, viral videos like as shorts and stuff. Okay. And I was doing the. Uh, you see this huge gap right here? Yeah. See, it says negative 45 million views. <laughs> that That's from, I can tell, that's from like copyright claims of him just regurgitating somebody else's IP and YouTube, you know, nuking it. And like, you actually get like a negative view count for that month. Yeah. And well, yeah, I've, seen happen, I've seen it happen to a lot of people like, um, because people just, they'll take whatever the viral video of the moment is and just throw it up on their channel. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it might take a year or two. But or it could take you know several years, but you know eventually. They'll well, even them. even when you pull stuff down, though, you'll get that because <laughs> when I pulled all the founders beards off my channel, I had that mm -hmm. dip because I had a lot of people that watch the founders videos. So yeah, if you pull material, not just necessarily YouTube doing it, but if you pull stuff, you'll get like a little trail. Yeah, dip where your views will drop. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. Like whenever you delete videos off your channel, it it subtracts those view counts from your all time count. Yeah. Yeah, but a number like that, like you just showed, is kind of crazy. So that might have been a little bit more of a different. But I run my other channel I run as a reaction channel. And that one, I deal with copyright stuff that pops up. And I pretty much have a claim that I send into them for the copyright mm -hmm. stuff. And about 85% of it, I win the claim. And they're able to go ahead and copyright my stuff. So it's not like an issue. So it's kind of like when things pop up. I've never got yeah. with a strike or whatever. It might be like a claim against it. And I send them in a reason under like, um being able to do so under the uh the free uh what you call them i can't think of it now maybe my second beer oh, fair there. use act fair fair use act yeah and i have a write-up for that and based on what they've said in the past under their own youtube standards i include that and it's like okay all right well let, we, we cleared it up so you're good so yeah, yeah. i remember i don't know if you ever watch uh the nostalgia critic mm -mm. Mm. he's one of, i mean he was old old, old school uh like Cause he just like does, you know, reviews of, well, he used to do reviews of old movies and TV shows when he first started around, like actually he started about the same time I did like 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you remember blip.tv. It was like an alternative to YouTube, kind of like Vimeo or one of those. Mm. Um, because anything like if you, you, you were reviewing a movie and like you showed clips, even though you were critiquing it, you know, or talking about it, like you would get like an automatic copyright strike. Right. But like Blip TV was like way better, like about allowing it's kind of like how Rumble is now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've actually got a Rumble account, but I never yeah. look at it as much. But I know some people have went over there and I'll get emails of kids from Rumble like, hey, your video is this or your video is that and everything. But I really like kept up on it. You know, that's funny. I haven't like my I have my Rumble account set up to um like anything I post on this channel. It just automatically mm -hmm. posts on that channel. Right. That's how mine is. But uh, I haven't even checked mine. I don't even know where my. Uh... Here it is. Yeah, this thing hasn't updated in like six months. Look at this. This is my Rumble channel. I have three followers. <laughs> and the, la the last video was from six months ago. And it's like, it's supposed to just do it automatically. And it's like, I don't know. I guess if you don't sign in, who knows? Like, I, it's not that I really care. It's like I kind of like having a backup, like just in case. Right. My channel ever got nuked, you know. Plus, I save all the videos are saved on. Uh, you know, I have like these uh, external oh, yeah. hard drives. I, I, I should really say, get some. That's cloud gotta be there. a lot of space for you there, though, right? Like how much? I know for... you need like five <laughs> terabytes. Yeah. <laughs> are you are you a tech guy, like a, a computer nerd, or? I do it from time to time. I actually just popped in some more um, RAM into the computer I'm using right now. It was old when I had 12 gigs. I got a new chip and put it up to 16 gig of RAM. But I have a more recent laptop over here. And then behind me on that screen, there's a desk. There's a laptop over there as well. So I've got like three computers plus a tablet uh, around uh -huh. here. And, and so, yeah, I get in. Plus, I got my work computer here, too. So, yeah, I've always got like tech around me. 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of like whenever we go on a vacation, I got to grab a laptop or a tablet to take with me. So, yeah. Yeah, I wish I could show you my I got a computer on Amazon last year and it's. It's like this big. Oh, OK, like a little <laughs> one, like a little box type thing or whatever. I yeah. think I've seen some. OK, yeah. It's like you can actually screw it onto the back of the monitor. It's nice oh, wow. and quiet, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, it's funny how the technology has progressed because, you know, I used to have like those huge tower, you know, Ooh. hard drives, you know, like you have like a, I haven't had a, a CD or a DVD player in like, I don't know, almost 10 years. Yeah. Like I don't even watch physical media anymore. It's all just Netflix and Amazon and YouTube, you know? Well, some of the laptops don't even have them built into them anymore, but the one I have here on the computer still has a DVD mm-hmm. drive, but the surface I use for work doesn't have it. My other surface doesn't, but like I'm to the point now, like I'm doing this here is one monitor and I feel handicapped mm-hmm. from it because when I go to work, I have three monitors. I have three different monitors that I actually have in front of me, which is awesome. And you, you, you know, if you don't have three monitors. You're like, that's <laughs> kind of crazy. Right. But if you get them, you will be surprised how quickly you become used to them. And yeah. when you don't have them, you're like, I need more monitors. So it's like one of the guys I watch on Saturdays is Nick Nimmin. I don't know if you watch him for Nimminati and some of the stuff he points out. Oh, like he's like a YouTube influencer or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So Saturday mornings, he does his live from like 9 to 12 in the morning. And they'll have all different types of monitors and stuff like that and everything. Where he, you can just see because they'll have cameras all around the room. So you can see all the different shots. And it's like it just makes it that much easier to have these at your fingertips. But at one point, you were like, I only need one monitor. But once you get past that, you're like, it becomes like uh, what was that Tom Cruise movie back in the day when he was a cop trying to uh, yeah catch something where they were crying Minority Report and he was just moving stuff around. That's how it becomes there. <laughs> I know I I have I've had two monitors for like I don't know ten or fifteen years. They're fairly cheap. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, even the flat screens. Uh, I I don't really need a third one, but anyway, we're you know, we're talking about tech. This is supposed to be a beer podcast. <laughs> so let's kind of get back to the beer stuff. So are are you a home brewer? Not anymore. I did I did some light home brew, and I guess you can say it was more the extract type brew when I first did it for a couple of years and made some beers. And luckily, knock on wood, they all came out actually pretty well. And I would take them in to my day job, and I would give them out to some different people to try. It. Everybody loved them. They still ask me if I'm going to start doing it again because they really enjoyed them. But it was like. Mm-hmm. When you start getting into this, you have to really choose a lane that you want to focus on, as you probably know, right? So it's kind of like I don't have the time to homebrew and then be able to want to do the video stuff. I want to do telling a story and reviewing beers and going around doing stuff. So I kind of just put that aside. When we moved out here a couple of years ago, I got rid of all the home brewing equipment and everything. And just kind of like this is where my main focus is going to be. I want to be the one to tell the stories, you know. Going back to like fill that void, like we said, like Michael Jackson actually telling the stories around beer. Like, there's great opportunity for someone else to kind of be out there or a bunch of people telling a story because Michael Jackson was so good as one person. It probably takes a few of us to actually, you know, come together to make one Michael Jackson, you know. So. By, by the <laughs> way, by Michael Jackson, I assume you mean uh, the British, the British guy. Yeah, not the guy with the white glove, but the yeah, British guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, I think this is one of his first books, Michael Jackson's Beer Campaign. This is kind of like the, uh, I forget what year this is, but it's funny. Uh, it's basically like his style guidelines or like just like breaking down the beer. Let's see. This is, uh, well, this is 1993. So I think he had some books. That in was the 80s. before he died then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so right now, like behind me, I'm kind of finishing through the beer Bible. With the beer Bible is an interesting read anyway, because you don't have to read I have that one too. It's different sections, but yeah. There you go. Yeah. So going through that. There it is. Now, I think I have the uh, second edition. Is yours the. Uh, I think yours is the. Or is it the first edition? Oh, let me see here. Yeah, this is the second edition, 2021. Yeah, this is this might be the first one, I guess. Oh, yeah, it says yeah, right there. yeah, 2021. Yeah. Volume okay. two. <laughs> yeah, this is the first one there. Um, but then I also have like um the beer bible. I actually I'm gonna the beer diet. I had the author on the show earlier this year. We talked about that one. I've had M. Salter on, a, on the show before, so I got her array of pints here as well that I'm reading through that. And so mm-hmm. try to get the knowledge put in. And that's one of the things there, too. You were talking about 
some of the people being beer Jason. And this is like one of the things I think I might've talked about in the interview. It's kind of like, for me, when I'm in, I'm all in. So it's kind of like, if I'm going to tell the story of beer, I wanted to make the beer because I want to get that feeling of what it's like to actually make the beer. If I want to do the research and stuff, I want to be able to talk from a spot of actually knowing. So I put in the mm-hmm. time to research. And I think that's what helps me to grow as a channel. Cause I think people start to notice the difference. Like if you turn into a beer person and they're just a basic, you know, oh, this beer is good. And that's the end of it. Basically. You're not like, well, this person isn't really a beer reviewer, right? They're kind of just like a yeah. beer person drinking beer or a person just drinking beer. Or if you turn in, they're like doing Lay's potato chips or that one, they're not really doing. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like when people watch my channel, I think the thing that helps me succeed is that they actually know what to expect. And they know that they can feel authentic about it, that I put the work in. Like, I get stuff at like stopped at beer stores talking to people and like recommendations and I kind of give a breakdown of stuff and they're like, sounds good to me. And they go and they buy that beer. I tell sort of, you need to put me on payroll because I can sell any of these beers you got. Yeah. Here. <laughs> like, you know, and it's just yeah. I, I pour myself into it. That's funny. I've actually considered getting a part-time job at Total Wine, just yeah. like what you were saying. Uh I don't know if you know um uh, Mike versus beer, he's huge on TikTok. No, I have not seen Mike versus Beer yet. TikTok is my newest thing. I just just got involved uh, in that in the last few months, really. It's funny. He's so big on TikTok. He make like he makes Simon look like nothing. Really? Yeah. He has like a ton of followers over there. Yeah. Let me bring this up if I can. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's weird using TikTok on the desktop, but yeah. yeah. So he has 171,000 followers. See, they, they they only show you the likes. They don't show you the view count, which I would love to know. Mm-hmm. I actually had him on my show a, a few months ago, and actually yeah. he's been on twice. Um, so yeah, he like he basically posts like a one or two minute beer review like every day, and he also cross posts it on Instagram. Okay. And um, yeah, it. I'm I mean I'm on TikTok too, but like I just post my archive shorts every morning there. Like I don't post any new material to TikTok. I probably should, but um, I really don't like the the format because like it's just meant to. It's after that like short attention span, you know, sixty seconds or less thing. Like at least that's how YouTube shorts. Well, is. TikTok. Well, TikTok, you go up to fifteen now. Is it? Yeah. So I've actually put like eight, perfect, though. <laughs> I, I put like well, I put like eight or nine minute videos on there, and people will, will watch them, but. I think it's still more that's something that's come along over the last year, I believe, but it's still more the the shorter thing. But I'll when I run my clips off of my videos, I'll put those over on TikTok as well because I can take my regular video mm-hmm. and go ahead and get it cut into a short, just a regular five minute beer video, and it'll pick up the hottest points of it. And I'll run that on TikTok and I'll run out on Instagram and Facebook reels and oh. I'll drop a short off of it and that'll drive stuff too. I just went to so I went to your YouTube channel and I clicked the link tree and then on the link tree I clicked the TikTok link but it's saying couldn't find this account so you might have uh you might have a wrong URL in there let me let me search let me take a look here whoops it just came up it did just come up. okay yeah I don't know unless they kick me off I don't know <laughs> All right, so you got 700 followers. Yeah, it is clear 700 yeah. today, I think. It must be uh, fairly new. Yeah. It's funny. Like, I, I just, I'm kind of like posting ghosts on TikTok. Like, I, first of all, I don't really get too many comments at all to begin with. So, but like, I know like TikTok is like super addictive. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you know, I have it on my phone, which it's kind of pointless. I should probably just delete it because I just basically just post the short every morning and then. I don't even check it until the next day. And it's funny because like a lot of uh, my shorts, like they're, they, whatever, it, they'll bomb on YouTube, and, but they'll get huge views on uh, on TikTok. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Whoops, that's not it. Sorry, just dead air mm-hmm. here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, here, if this is my channel, Chaz Beer Reviews, obviously. Um, so, like, look, you see the last two shorts that I posted only got a handful of views. It's like mm-hmm. the Hofbrau Oktoberfest beer, 17 views. And I posted that yesterday or two. Yeah, yesterday. 
Mm-hmm. But then if we go to my TikTok channel, the exact same video, the exact same video, almost 1,200 views. Oh, wow. Same thing yeah. with the one from this morning. This is the, this one has 1,135. And the one I, uh, it had like 16 last time I checked it on YouTube. It's very, Ooh. it's very weird how, like how it'll, it'll, you know, bomb on one platform and, you know, go shoot to the moon on the other. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's really, I mean, it's tying into how, the algorithm algorithm is presenting it, I think, out there to folks, and then mm-hmm. how folks are, you know, picking it up. Like on, like the shorts that I just had released. Mm-hmm. Like, I just did one talking about. I just released it earlier today. It was like at um, actually, I think it was like eight o'clock when it came out. Um, no, no, this was at four o'clock, and it was we were talking about Milwaukee's best NA beer. And then mm-hmm. being an indie car sponsor, it's already got 338 views. Um, and then I had a video that came out earlier today with the what's the perfect sweet, dark, and rich beer. Where we were talking about kind of pastry style, so it was like 526. But sometimes these will kick over on TikTok and do well, sometimes they won't. But I had another one that came out about beer flavored ice cream, and it's showing seven views right now. So yeah. It, it's, it's how the algorithm is kind of putting stuff out there, I guess, and figuring it out. The one thing I will notice I have, which doesn't even bother me anyway, because I expect, you know, the wider your audience gets, the more you're going to probably get people that dislike stuff. You know, one thing about YouTube, you got to have thick skin. You got to you got to know you're going to get thumbs downs at points. But mm-hmm. I rarely get them in the long form. But as I put more shorts out, I'll see more thumbs down out there because it's just I'm actually people are scrolling through and they're just like. Yeah, it's like they, they're not, I actually they're not heard that stuff. thumbs down can be good because it's still engagement. I'm I'm fine yeah, with it. it. Counts yeah, as it doesn't, engagement. It doesn't, it, it, yeah. <laughs> it also makes it, it also makes YouTube think your video is controversial. So like if it has like a 50-50 yeah. thumbs up to thumbs down ratio, yeah. YouTube thinks, "Oh, this is really controversial. Let's yeah. just, this, like this is going to get people's buttons." Yeah. Is your uh, is your YouTube channel monetized? Oh yeah, it's been monetized. Yeah, yeah, it's been monetized. Yeah, mine is too, but I still haven't actually gotten a paycheck from it yet. Because I really, yeah, I'm just not getting enough views you, or enough engagement. I mean, I get a lot of views on the shorts, but okay. like you need like 10 million views well, on a short to like ten million. Dollar. <laughs> yeah, for it, it, it. I mean, the one thing I guess on the long form, it depends on the views you got coming in and then I guess what your RPM is that you're earning off of them. Mm-hmm. Right. So as you become more popular, I've noticed in different categories, cause you can go in your analytics and see RPM depend. If you do a video on something that might not just be a beer review, might be something else that draws more interest. You might have an advertiser actually link into that more and you'll get $14 per thousand views versus a dollar for a thousand views, right? So right, that right. all kind of so you kind of look into that kind of stuff. But I've been fortunate. I mean, I get a little bit here and there. Plus, I get companies that reach out on stuff sometimes. So it's kind of like people ask me, "Well, you're not making any money from it?" And I'm like, "Well, am I making money from it? No, I can't quit the day job." But at the same point, yeah. it does give me some beer in the cooler, and sometimes I get other things. My, my beer, we talking about beer fridge. Like, my beer fridge was sent to me when I did the video from um, New Air. New Air sent that to me years ago. Um, and I wasn't even at, I think when they sent it to me, I might have maybe been at a thousand subs or was getting close, but they reached out to me from seeing stuff. So it's just, it happens. I mean, it's just, you know, again, but I think that's, you put the work in. I, I'm always a believer in put the work in and people will find you and you have the opportunity. I'm a big fan, a big person of, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, not really luck, but putting yourself in the right position. Um, you know, in the right place at the right time. Yeah, right place, right time. I can't think of the word that kind of uh so fortunate. Like, not fortunate, but um blessed. <laughs> God, there was even, there was even a movie. I think John Cusack did a movie with the title. I can't think of what the movie is now. No. Um it's one of those city words where I can't think. Of. I'm, I'm probably possible I'm not thinking about it. But anyway, oh, serendipity? Serendipity, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, I'm very serendipitous in that. So it's kind of like I get some people that are like. You know, you see some some guys that'll ask me stuff, and it's kind of like, "Why well, did this?" And they didn't send me anything. I did like, they don't have to send you anything. Like, if you, and if you're coming out with that attitude, they're not going to send you anything because you're just trying to drive. I, I when I go out and I do it, I do it for the story of it. I do it because I'm enjoying it. I do it for the passion of it. And and with my people that watch, I'm honest about it, so they appreciate that. It's it's authentic, right? And so 
if a company's looking at your channel, they see that authenticity and then they're like, oh, okay, this might be a person we want to work with. But if you're out there trying to fake it, yeah, they're going to notice that and stuff too. It's like nobody's going to do this to try to get rich. I mean, unless you're Mr. Beast, but when yeah, or like that. <laughs> have you ever yeah. seen that Polish guy, uh, Brower Capria? No, I haven't. You know no, I haven't about? seen. No, I haven't yeah. seen him. I brought him up. So, like, he's okay. in Poland. He's a beer tuber, like we are, but he gets mad. He gets even bigger views than Simon. The only mm -hmm. problem is, like, all his videos are exclusively in Polish, mm -hmm. and he doesn't even have uh, English subtitles on it. See how, like, the the control yeah. or the closed caption, like, it doesn't even give the option. Like, I want to, like, why can't I just turn on English subtitles? Right, and be able to yeah. see that there. Yeah, he has to set it up for that, and yeah, and that's and that's one thing I've noticed over the years with YouTube. Depending on what country you're in, here in here, kind of in in America, in the U.S., we have so many options. Whether it's TV, streaming, YouTube, whatever. And in some countries, like my friends that live in England, you got to pay like a certain crazy thing to watch TV there. So a lot of them watch YouTube more, right? Mm -hmm. If you're like in a Latin country, you might watch YouTube more than doing TV. So you have a chance to build a bigger audience because that's more of your main function. Think about that. Like if we had YouTube as our main function and we didn't have NBC and CBS, and kind of, then we would be the ones out there. Like, you know, the newscasters at nighttime that everybody turns in at six 30. So location does play into it for some countries, I think as well. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what happened, but it seemed like when beer tube, this niche started, like it was like almost exclusively American and like, there was a couple of Brits like Simon, obviously. Mm. And I don't know if you remember Mark Dredge or Zach Avery. They were huge, like back in the early 2010s. And they just kind of disappeared. And like now, like the majority of like beer tubers are all from the UK, England mostly, you know? Yeah. And there's like a, there's a couple of guys in like Sweden and like Peter, Master of Hobbits in Denmark. Yeah. I know Peter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but least, I mean, they do their, sh their shows in English. So, I mean, anybody who speaks English can watch it. Um, but yeah, now, like now beer tube is just completely dominated by the U mostly, like I said, England. I don't even think there's like really that many Irish people on there. It's like all, most, it's like all English and like a handful of like Welsh and Scottish people. And, you know, um, I'm surprised. Like, they're actually, as far as I can find, there aren't like any English-speaking German channels. There, there, there might be a lot of German-speaking German channels. Mm -hmm. but, like, if it's not in English, you know, I can't comprehend it. And also, like, when I make my list of the top beer tubers of the month or the year, like, I'm only mm -hmm. doing English channels because if I'm going to do it to like all languages, then I would have to like find the biggest beer tubers in Brazil or the biggest beer tubers in, you know. China. Well, maybe not China, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, there's definitely an influx. I mean, some of the, when I came in, some of the guys I connected with, like I said, at one point I thought I should be over in the UK because it was like my buddy Craig that does Kemp beer reviews, Dean that does Dean's beer reviews. Um, those are guys that came into Harry had done, was doing blue, blue nose beer reviews. Rob was doing hop zine. Um, so I was used to a lot of the UK guys doing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and now I see stuff like Don, Don's been reviews. He's actually, uh, I think Don's in Scotland, I believe. Yeah, I think he's in Scotland. Um, and I know people that are coming out of the areas, but here in America, I also have people like, um, that are doing stuff like we have, um, Kyle doing no hype beer reviews. We got Joe doing a beer patrol. We've got yeah. uh, Joe's been doing jowls for how long out there, right? In California. And so we have some of the American, and now we have the Canadians as well. Um, the Alcanas that I mentioned earlier, they're up in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. Shane for Shane's craft beer reviews. Okay, we're going to all be up there next week in Niagara to see them. And so that'll be pretty cool. So yeah, it's, it's become more international. It's become more international, but at the same point, I, I, it's funny because a lot of them, are still trying to get the American beers because they want the American, the American hop. Yeah. And they're all getting the American life. So it's kind of funny when you're watching. I see people that do it in England and they're like, oh, I got a tree house. Like, how do you get a tree house? I can't get a tree house. I'm in the States. You're overseas and you got a tree house, right? So, I know. <laughs> it's always kind Remember, of crazy. Whoever's talking up Joe Senegalia, I want I want that dude's phone number too. Yeah. <laughs> you can like tree house and Hetty Topper and all that stuff. Yeah, no and he's out, that. he's out in California, right? But he has connections all over the country. So, yeah. Um, you know, because he's been doing it for such a good time. He was another one back in the day when I first got on. He was one of the ones I was coming across as well, watching his stuff. And 
being an arcade, being a gamer kind of guy, him having all the arcade games, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch this guy and see what he does. He had all the arcade games there, which was pretty cool. Oh yeah, I love that. I have the, I have the the remember the the Super Nintendo and Nintendo Minis that came out like ten mm-hmm. years ago. I have I have those. I have mine's hacked with and like so you just take an external USB thumb drive. And you can put like as many systems and as many games on it as you want because it's just it's just a Linux computer inside there. Oh wow! I have, yeah, I have a bunch of uh, actual arcade games on there. I have like every Nintendo game, every Super Nintendo game, every Sega game, every Game Boy game. You know, even though I mostly just play like Nintendo and Super Nintendo games on there. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had like the. Well, I mean, I first of all, I need to get a house. I'm it's real estate is like so oh, ridiculous. Florida. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. crazy. I just saw a story about Florida, how crazy it is out there. And I like know. insurance companies are jacking up rates because of all the stuff too. So yeah, it doesn't make it easy. Uh, insurance, and interest rates. Insurance is out of control. Real estate is out of control. Um, it's funny, but getting back to what we were just talking about, I was going to make this joke at the beginning of the show I'm about 50 minutes late, but I was going to say, congratulations I'm being the first brother on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I the first for that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you beat Joe D. <laughs> well, we need to get more yeah. on, man. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, this is definitely a white male dominated space. Yeah. There's, uh, so I, 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 there's hardly any women either. Like, the only women, like, my girlfriend Christina is, like, you know, a fairly regular co host on my show. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you watch Queen City beer tube you know what i'm talking about i haven't seen queen city i'll, I'll bring them up it's a husband and wife duo they're in uh, charlotte because uh, i guess the nickname for charlotte is queen city right i, I asked a uh, chat B- gpt about that they said it's a uh, charlotte was named after uh the queen of uh king edward i think like okay. his his wife was uh like she was originally german and I don't know, but that's that's how that's where Charlotte got the nickname Queen City. Because so, uh, Cincinnati's Queen City too, so that's interesting. Is it? Yeah, yeah. They're they're called oh, the okay. Queens. They're called the. It might be like the Ohio State, but they're called the Queen City. So okay. <laughs> this is like the only other like female beer tuber that I can think of. Oh, there's that. I mean, it's been a while because actually I did. I think it was like four or five years ago, but I did a special live broadcast and it was, it was, I, I needed to go back and do another one, but it was like the woman in beer volume one, I think. And I had, mm-hmm. I had Julie on who does uh, marketing for a lot of the beer companies and stuff through her company. I had the beer babe, Carla, she was on. I had, I met uh, her. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on, I had M on there, pints and panels. I, I've had a uh, Afro beer chick. I've had her on. I've had, and it was just like, I was, I was like, yeah, I was like the only guy. Like, and I'm like, I'm not saying nothing. This is your guy's thing. I just want to, you know, kind of from the women perspective and provided them the feel, which they all enjoyed. And we had a great time doing it. It was funny. When I talked to Carla, she's like, you know, when I got your invite, I was kind of like a little bit like, you know what, do I want to go in there? Cause she's like, based on what they've seen and stuff like that in the industry, like the male dominant, but she's like, you know what, but it's Rajay. So I know you're cool because we follow each other on Twitter. So she came on. I was I was honored to have her on there. It was a great show. Um, I need to do another one there. But Tanya Mikowski was one that also um, she doesn't do as much now, but she was doing it for a bit. And it's it's interesting. It's funny. I just did a short on the channel and we were talking about diversity coming up in the beer world. And one of the guys had mentioned you know, following the beer babes family, which I followed. I know them actually on Instagram and stuff like that and everything of all the different members of the group and everything. And I got like a comment that came in from a guy and he's like, well, if you guys say so, but all the women beer that I've had has, has been shitty or whatever. I'm like, dude, like seriously, like you can't generalize for any girls that I've had. I've been I'm, thousands of beers later. I've had bad beer. It might've been from a woman or a man. It's like, it's not a general type. And it's just like, you still see people making those comments out there. And it's just like most mm-hmm. people don't even understand the historical aspect of beer that your first brewers were women. So naturally, you should have more women involved in the beer world because they were the first brewers. I mean, it doesn't get more yeah. simple than that, right? Like you would think, you know, there should be some uh, speaking visibility. Of beer, speaking of women in beer tube, I forgot to mention, uh, uh, I don't know if you watch Rate My Beer, Paul and Michelle. I forgot to mm-hmm. mention. Mm-hmm. Like they, they're they're like a husband and wife duo. So I had yeah. them on this show about a month ago. Okay. Um, 
I had, I don't know if you, she's not really on YouTube, but she's huge on Instagram IPAs with Angela. Oh yeah. I've, I've actually met with Angela before. So we yeah. actually were at a beer fest together and, and yeah, I think she said she's stuff. in Maryland yeah. too. Yeah. 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 And, and um, uh, I had Kate Bernat who is like a journalist. I know, I'm, I'm with Kate on, on, on uh, Twitter and stuff. I haven't had her on. I need to have her on, but we've talked on stuff back and forth there. Yeah. So here's the, this is the, uh, Everybody I've had on Chad's Beer Podcast since I started it. Kyle yeah. from No Hype Beer Reviews was the first guest. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Kyle's been great. Yeah, it's funny. Like when they had all the um, stuff come out about the um, women issues that took place a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember all that stuff. And like Rap Magnet was kind of doing like I would talk to Rap Magnet all the time. Brianna on all the stuff that was happening. And she connected me mm -hmm. with stuff because I actually had a video with one of the women that said she was harassed by one of the brewery type things. And she came in and told her story. And I had checked with, you know, Brianna, like, how do I do this? Blah, blah. And she gave me some different things, but she's like, she was, you know, appreciative of being able to share those kind of stories out there. So they're definitely out there. Wish you were beers. Another channel on YouTube, that's Daniel and Tiffany. So his wife's mm -hmm. one there with him. She does stuff around beer. There's definitely women that are out. There's definitely out there. It's just, again, it's all about the exposure. And the thing with YouTube is whatever you're watching, it tries to tone that in. So if you're not opening up your audience enough, then you might not be able to see some of the people too. Not to say you're not doing it intentionally. It's just, mm -hmm. I try to watch a wide array of things so I can try to get other people involved. And then again, my social media on X and Instagram and Facebook has been helpful because it gets me into other circles where I see a lot more of the diversity type stuff. Like Daddy Porter is another guy you want to get on. He does. He knows his beer in and out out of Wisconsin. gets great beers in Wisconsin. What was, he what was the thing? Uh, Daddy Porter. Greg Matty Porter. Yeah, he does a lot of great stuff. They do a Friday Night Live. Him and He's Doug. on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. I think I found him. Yeah, so I do stuff with him on different things at times. But he's been doing it for a number of years now. This is a, yeah, that's him there. Yeah, so he does I, some pretty good stuff. I just subscribed to him, and he's actually pretty big on having like a lot of the women on his show and stuff too, and beer. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Like so. Like we mentioned Treehouse and Hill Farmstead and, you know, a while ago. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I had Simon from Real Ale Guide on last week. And I, like I was saying, like, you know, of course you've heard of them. Like, you know, like they're both of those breweries are considered like one of the best breweries in the world. But it's if you think about it, it's kind of amazing that like outside of Massachusetts or outside of Vermont, you know, like why would these breweries like why would they be? among us like household mm -hmm. names like these are like must-have breweries but they're so small like you like you can't buy their beer in stores you have to actually go to the brewery and wait in line yeah you know it's kind of like how how do we know that? like i mean you're familiar with treehouse you're familiar with hill farmstead mm -hmm. and i'm sure you've had at least one of their beers oh i've had treehouse yeah i haven't had hill farmstead i don't think i've had hill. i'm not a treehouse yes but it's like it's like on your wish list though, and like it makes like no sense. Like, wh why would this small brewery that like does barely does barely any distribution, <laughs> you know? Well, that's the that's the lure the lure of craft beer and the part of I guess you could say Jonah and our white whale, right? Trying to find these beers because depending what circles you're floating in, you'll hear about stuff and they'll be like, oh, you you haven't had Pliny the Elder, and it's like no. Oh, you got to try it, or you got to get plenty younger, or you got to get, you know, King Julius, not just regular Julius, but King Julius. Like, they yeah. become a thing where it's kind of hunting. Like, like for like the longest time when I was in Cincinnati, everybody's like, oh, you got to get 450 North. You got to get 450 North. And like, we didn't get to distribute. And finally, we were able to get 450 North. And it was like, it was great and stuff, but it was kind of like mm -hmm. this moment of epiphany of finally getting that off your list, right? That you're, okay, I'm done. I got, it. I got 450 North. Like, when I was out in Cincinnati, one of the beers we would occasionally get is our buddy Joe was that other half in because he was in Buffalo. So now that I'm here in Baltimore, it's like, oh, we got a other half in D.C. I can get another half anytime I want. It's funny because now it's kind of like, eh, I'm not really feeling other half right now, which if you told me Cincinnati, like I can get other half anytime I want to. I'd have been all over. So it's kind of yeah, it's this whole chase type thing. But then when you're actually there, it starts to become a thing where oh, now I can get anywhere. Like I feel like people in Vermont are kind of the same way. Ah. I could get some Julius, but I can get that anytime. Yeah. So yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> what what like how do you follow like the beer trends or like like uh like like when you when you go beer shopping or like if you make like if you had like a wish list of beers you wanted to get, 
like like realistically and unrealistically like you know realistically i would like to get you know something from hill farmstead or treehouse like unrealistically mm -hmm. i would like to get like plenty of the younger is that the harder yeah plenty of the younger yeah. plenty of the elders the slightly easier one to find or like westy 12 out in belgium you know oh, or that's, good. Um, that's a good one yeah um so like where do you like when you like who do you watch or who do you read where you'd be like okay that's that's i gotta get that beer yeah it's it's a mix of things so part of it is i'm in numerous facebook groups with a lot of beer people so mm -hmm. there's beers that are being shared and beers that are being talked about okay well that one catches my interest or this one here this one that um then the other part of it is talking with guys when we're doing like collabs on youtube and things like like next week i'll be in niagara that i mentioned with the canadian guy but we're gonna have like a bunch of beer tubers from youtube it's like a beer tuber get together. So we'll be talking about mm -hmm. different things. And it's kind of like, oh, they got this or they got that. Like for the longest time out of Canada, it was about flying monkeys. And I finally got the flying monkeys beer out of Cincinnati because they were able to get distribution for it, which was great. Um, so it's, it's talking with those guys. It's reading stuff. I have the blog, which is the rajbeerventures.com site. And on that site, I get like releases from breweries that I'll share as PR releases on there. And things like that will catch my interest. So it's kind of like I mentioned earlier. I had a PR release from North Coast about their new uh, barrel aged Old Rasputin. And so when I get that, I kind of share that out there, but I also get their contact information. So I'll reach out to them, like, you know, do you ever want to come on to the show? Blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about it. We'll get you on. And they were like, oh, yeah, well, let's see if we can get something set up. But ahead of that, let's go ahead and get you a bottle of this so you can try, like, try it out and type thing. So it's reading, it's researching, it's searching for stuff. Like when I do the live stream, on Thursdays, I, I do a search on YouTube for Google News that week for beer news, and I pull up stuff. Sometimes things will catch my interest, and I'll make notes and stuff like that. So it's got it's got a hodgepodge mixture of just finding different stuff, kind of keeping your ear to the streets, so to speak. You know? Yeah. So it's it's uh, a lot of reading and stuff. When I'm not doing a day job, it's pretty much like I tell people, like I'm at day, I'm here at night, I'm everywhere in the beer world. You want to be. <laughs> This is my other yeah. I have, I have two cats. This is Logan. He wants to eat. You, Logan wants to be on camera too. So yeah. No, he, he wants to eat. He's like, where's mm. my dinner? In a half hour, dude. <laughs> you have an automatic feeder that goes off at 10 o'clock. Well, yeah. I have to fill it up at 10 o'clock. But, um, but I but I say I think a key is I feel like you want to set yourself up with some type of system that you can follow and maintain. That's not overburdened, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, don't try to kill yourself. It's like people ask about social media. When I did this and I started launching stuff, I would share stuff to Facebook and Instagram. I used to tumble. And it's kind of like, make sure whatever you share to, you can manage and then just keep going from there. And then again, serendipity, you start building stuff out. You're getting people's attention. Mm -hmm. Part of, I'm fortunate in that I feel part of my background does help from being in sales and being in advertising and being in journalism. I talked about earlier, so I can write stuff up. I can market stuff out there. I know how to draw up a story around it. And that all helps to kind of pull things together. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I used to be, like, huge into, like, beer trades and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. like this this channel is basically, you can divide in, like, two halves. Like, the the first half is like the Albany years. Cause I started this show when I lived in Albany, New York. And, uh, then I moved to Florida in 2015. It's funny, right. When you started your show. And, um, like when I was in Albany, I was like on all like the beer advocate forums, the rate beer forums, basically like, and I don't know if you remember uh beer geek nation. He yes. doesn't make videos anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like basically whatever he was talking about, I was like, okay, that's what I got to get, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I don't know. Like, and also, like, I've kind of, it's funny, Simon and I talked about this last week, where you kind of hit a point where you've kind of run out of adjectives, you know, to describe a beer. You know, it's kind of, and for me, especially, like, the hazy IPA craze of the last 10 years or so, mm -hmm. you know, I've had, like, a million different hazies, and they all taste, like, more or less the same to me. Mm -hmm. Um like some of them, like every once in a while, I'll have one that's like definitely better than the others, but it still doesn't just blow my mind the way like Pliny the Elder or like mm. even like Ruination did, like back in like, you know, oh, the Stone Ruination. Days. Yeah, yeah. You know? I kind of think of like beer era. Like I just pick, I kind of like break it down to like presidential administrations, you know, like the <laughs> basically like 
the second uh, Bush administration and the first Obama administration. <laughs> I mean, that was like peak. That was peak beer years. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's not hit. Let's not hit a recession administration. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, how, it's amazing how beer has changed so much since then. Like, remember, Stone was like such a maverick back then, and like now they sold out to Sapporo, and like now. Yeah. Like uh, and then like the worst, I th I think the worst case is a uh, brew dog, you know they they were like so like cutting edge and like very mavericky and everything and like now they just mm. make like the most basic bitch beers yeah. you can think of, you know. <laughs> well, they've had their they've had their issues taking place there too. So um, yeah, James Watt having to step down, um, but it's. You know, it's a uh, it's a changing landscape, right? So mm -hmm. right now we have ninety five hundred breweries that are out there, approximately. And it's funny because people ask me, "Oh, I saw a brewery close. What brewery will not go?" Well, thing is, when a brewery closes, most of the time another brewery buys the space. It's kind of like there's people yeah. in the wings that are waiting to get their opportunity too. So when it comes to like some of the things that we're seeing, yeah, it can become a little repetitive. That's why I wish a lot more of the breweries would branch out. And not just play follow the leader, right? Like I got a brewery here, it's Guilford Brewery, and mm -hmm. they actually do more European type beers. Like you don't have an American IPA even at the brewery when you go. They have an English IPA, but they do like stout, porter, all British type stuff, right? And it's kind of refreshing because you're trying different things there that you're not getting at the other breweries. Where it's kind of like this is a nice little takeaway you know you go here you got a saison coming out in a few weeks over there they're doing other stuff besides trying to do it and it's building their own image they had just purchased flying fish brewery to keep them in business out in new jersey and they'll let them do the craft beer stuff under them but it's kind of nice having a brewery you can go to it's like you know what i just want to have a let's say for lack of a better word a beer where it's just beer like it's not this yeah. crazy fad type beer it's just a beer to sit back and enjoy they got a cigar lounge all kind of stuff you can just relax sit there give me like a box and i can sit here and just chill and you you look at all the different styles of beers you know why are more people doing rouse beers why aren't more people doing keller beers why aren't more people here. doing all <laughs> beers right like you got all these other beers that are out there everybody's stuck in like these few styles there's so much opportunity that people could be enjoying and it becomes a thing is it because breweries are afraid to because people are asking for ipa or are people just asking for ipa because that's all they know is ipa yeah right? it's the chicken yeah. and the egg thing <laughs> it's the chicken know? and the egg thing you, it's a paradigm you're caught in right but yeah have some breweries start breaking that paradigm start breaking it and see what happens you know yeah. like one of the breweries i enjoyed in cincinnati was braxton brewing now they were actually the ones that launched if you heard of garage beer they're the mm -hmm. ones that they the ones that launched Garage Beer as one of their beers. They actually sold it off to its own line, which is not my now you have Garage Beer, like the Kelsey brothers have bought into and all kind of stuff. But they had Braxton Brewing and they also have Braxton Labs. And Braxton Labs is their small batch stuff. And they would do different things under that to build interest. And now we get more things out there. And it was great because here's a brewery taking more risk. And they were like one of the more successful breweries out there. And they just kept introducing stuff. They didn't have to go all full tilt, just get a little bit out there and get the attention of some people. And you can go from there. So speaking of Cincinnati, are you familiar with uh, urban artifact? Been there many times. Got a video on the channel with urban artifact touring the brewery my, and doing stuff out there. My friend, Brett, um, he was one of the co-founders and he's one of the head brewers of this brewery. He was in my homebrew club back in Albany. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, he sent me a whole bunch. He sent me a huge care package of their beers um, around Thanksgiving last year. And I've had this one. This is a, uh, I think it's 15% ABV. Yeah, yes, it's not. Yeah. 15% ABV. But, you know, it's like, it's it's like peach juice. Like if you had like, yeah. like peach, like a uh, fruit cocktail, like in that syrup. Mm. You know, like it, it's like that kind of consistency. And, um, I I mean we could do like a whole podcast on, you know, like all these fruited sours. You know, I think like yeah. the the slushy sours as they call them now. Yeah, yeah. You know, cool. I think like are they are, is it really beer or is it something else? Because like I mean, it's like they start with beer with you know malted barley and they throw like a tiny little bit of hops in there, but then it's like all the fruit extract and concentrate. Like that's yeah. accounting for like most of the sugar. And like, I mean, like that one's like 15. Uh, well, that's not 
that's not what they usually do. They usually do, you know, closer to like five, six, seven percent ABV. Um, the, actually, in Florida, I think they're out of Miami. You ever seen RAR Brewing? Yeah, yeah, I get RAR beers too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like they're slushy, all slushy sours, and it's kind of like, is it beer or is it some kind of hybrid of like beer and like FMBs? Because like, I would say like the for me the biggest surprise of like not because it's not really beer, but like of just like the uh, let's say adult beverage sector mm-hmm. is the absolute rise of hard seltzers and fmbs because like mm-hmm. you know like sam adams they started making twisted tea as a lark and like now twisted tea it's accounts huge. for like the vast majority of their sales like they hardly make anything off beer anymore it's all twisted tea and truly hard cider or uh, not hard cider uh hard seltzer although they do own angry orchard seltzer or cider sorry i'm getting confused here um, <laughs> Yeah, so like I, it was funny. I was talking with Simon about this last week, and he just couldn't believe it. It's like because it's it, hard seltzer has not taken off in Europe at all, mm-hmm. and but like in America, it's the opposite. It's like if you go to the beer section of your supermarket, like at least one, maybe two coolers or sections in there are dedicated to like White Claw, truly, um, you know, and even like the hard Mountain Dew. Yeah, hard you mountain know, do stuff, and uh, you, also hard, the, hard you also have the you also have the ciders that have gotten their space now. So ciders yeah. are it's becoming more. It's funny because um, this is the first year Great American Beer Fest. They've actually limited some of the beers coming in because they're opening up for RD, RTDs there. So they're mm-hmm. having the ready to drink cocktails at the American Beer Fest. The American Beer Fest. It's now going to have ready to drink cocktails. So wow. that tells you like the wave has changed, right? So. And that's the thing. You have to be able to adapt in this marketplace. And you're seeing more breweries. I just did a – one of the videos I did was for uh, Devil's Backbone Distillery when I was down at one of the island vac- – we went on vacation uh, a couple months ago, Tigman Island, and I had their bourbon smash, orange bourbon smash, which was great. It was beat the heat. You're at the lake or whatever. You just knock mm-hmm. these things back, you know. Mm-hmm. And they actually – one of the people from Devil's Backbone reacted and really enjoyed the review, and thanks for actually putting it out there. But it was just like, it's not the same as what you're thinking of before. I, I still in my mind, because I'm older, when I, when somebody says it's not beer, but it's kind of like that, I always feel like, is this going to be like a Bartles and James type thing? Or what's it going to be? But they're like, some of the ready to drink cocktails they're making are phenomenal. It's kind of like, yeah, all right, they kind of got to get a space over here. What do you think accounts for that? I was listening. I don't know if you listen to any beer podcasts. I, lo- I don't mm-hmm. really listen to too many of them. I like... Uh, Drink beer, think beer with John Hall. It's from All About Beer, mm-hmm. and uh, it's basically he, like he's always like at like beer fest and he's doing panel discussions with brewers. And um, they were he was asking this question on I think it was like the last show or one of the mo- more recent episodes. And one of the brewers he said, you know, I think the reason like hard seltzers took off is the same reason like craft beer took off. It's just kind of like a youth rebelling at the previous generation because craft beer took off from people who were sick of fizzy yellow beer well then like you know all the people that made craft beer like you know ruination and dogfish head and all that stuff well then we got old and we had kids and they grew up and they didn't want freaking you know ruination (laughs) so they decided i'm gonna have you know a iced tea that tastes you know a hard iced tea or hard lemonade or hard hard seltzer you know like that's you know so they associate like what we associated at the time, mm-hmm. you know, 10, 15 years ago with the uh, cutting edge must have rebellious beverage, mm-hmm. you know, the, the 100 IBU, 120 IBU IPA, you know, like now the kids today who'd like just turn legal drinking age, like they're like, oh, that's an old man's drink, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think maybe subliminally each generation tries to find their own thing right so right 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 kind of like you know growing up as a kid and seeing our parents or even grandparents drinking millers or schaefer's whatever it may be you know you may have tried Mm -hmm. that at one point you're like oh i don't like that you know when craft beer came along you got on board with that but part of it too is kind of the knowledge base has changed right some of the young people the millennials the y's or z's or whatever one we're into now they've kind of picked up things over the period. They're like, Oh no, I don't want the gluten. I don't want this. I don't want that. And so it's made seltzers more attractive, just like it has with some of the ciders. So there's a knowledge part of it where 
I think some of them are more more health conscious. We see a lot of that with some of the younger generations, where a lot of them are more. I don't say necessarily vegan, but they might have more vegan dishes or maybe more vegetarian dishes. They mm -hmm. try to cut out a little bit better on stuff. So they're going to be more drawn to something along those lines. Um, and the opportunity is there for these places to actually capitalize on all these different breweries or cideries or whatever like that. Even like me, like meaderies are cashing in on some of the audiences they're able to grab because it becomes a, it becomes a thing there. So I just think it's kind of the knowledge and the generational aspect of we want something of our own, right? Like we want to have this, like, you know, you know, mm -hmm. being a Gen Xer, you know, craft beer is definitely something that's, that's us for sure. Cause we like, we, like we came in with micro brews were in the nineties and they came up and then they failed and then they came back with craft beer and you're like, wait a second, mm -hmm. if that micro brewery would have been 10 years later, it would have been selling like crazy, right? Cause we remember those kind of things. These young ones are now being tied into all these other ones that are not that. And maybe that's why we're seeing a rise of slushies, right? Because, they might want that little sweet taste like is an adult Slurpee or whatever it may be. So mm -hmm. you're seeing different aspects of that. So it's kind of interesting just to see, but I think they're trying to find their foot in and then also some of the health conscious, so to speak. I mean, you're drinking, so you're not being fully healthy, but you're saying, I want a better alternative, right? And the other thing is yeah. too, just like in some areas Nothing. of the country, they're seeing some of the THC drinks take off, right? Because they want that alternative rather than alcohol. If yeah. it's legal there, they're doing that. So. It might not be that um, that they genuinely like it. It's just kind of like uh, kind of lost my train of thought. But I was going to say, what I one of the things I like the best about being a beer nerd is that you know, um, we have compared to wine, you know, mm -hmm. we have so many more. Here's my this is the latest style guidelines. Oh, I got and, this. I I don't get the latest. But I got that too. <laughs> <laughs> like we have like so many variety like there's so much nuance to beer like think of like think of like styles that are very close like take like a kolsch a dortmunder a mm -hmm. hellas lager you know a german pilsner like if you just went up to strangers on the street and they would probably like these all taste the same to me but like you and i we could probably distinguish the, the differences between them yeah and uh that's that's what i for me is one of the things i love about being a beer nerd um are you are you? I, I saw you mention BJCP on your show a few times. Are, are you BJCP certified? Not BJ, not BJCP certified. I've I studied a lot of materials. I never got into because I didn't really do the craft brewing as much. When I was mm -hmm. in Cincinnati and, and Northern Kentucky, I was invited to some of their meetings to do some things and kind of learn about more of it. I just never got around to it. Um, and without me home brewing, it's kind of like I think I mentioned to you before. I'm probably going to go ahead and I know you did already, like the certified beer server exam, just to mm -hmm. just to have something out there, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So just to get that done, and then whether I go to Cicerone or not, I'll decide later. But um, no, but I read the materials and I want to know the styles again. I, I try to research it as all I can and look at the styles and kind of knowing the difference. And shout out to you for being certified because there's definitely that's not an easy test for people that don't know. I mean, you got to definitely put the work in to know the which styles. one because i have two of them <laughs> what a b what a what a bjcp when you're like got to go through and basically do the tastings and all that kind of stuff i mean later on in the cicerone thing if you go to that you'll have tastings but just to get bjcp certified it is some work you put into it which is which is good yeah. and it shows your determination it shows your knowledge and stuff as well yeah the bjcp is two tests it's like there's an online online test it's multiple choice Technically, it's open book, so you could theoretically Google every single question. Um, but like the way that they're worded is like, you know, like a lot of it, you would have to like you you'd have to have this this uh, guideline, and you have to like be able to look it up. Like it would, it'd be yeah. something like you know, is uh is di diacetyl acceptable on a Czech premium pale lager or something like that? You know, um, if you didn't know that off the top of your head, you'd have to look it up in the book. Yeah. Um, then you have to then if you pass the the written well it's not really written it's multiple choice mm. you pass that then you have to go in person somewhere and take a a tasting exam and it's basically like judging like a homebrew competition i don't know if you've ever done that or not i've done tons of them mm. um they give you they give you like six six beers and they just tell you judge this as if it was this style but the difference is they don't give you the style guidelines okay. so it's not so much and it's and I've noticed that like when I'm actually judging at a competition, even though you have the, the guidelines right there with you, is I kind of look them over like on the first beer or two, but then after a while you kind of know. Mm -hmm. and it's more about like critiquing the beer, like 
I'm getting this, I'm getting this, I'm getting this, or like, especially like if there's a flaw in it, like diacetyl, like, oh, this is very buttery. Right. You know, this is a uh, very tannic or, uh, you know, um, oxidation for me, which is all, I always Ooh. get it as a uh, lemon lollipop. Oh, it's funny. Okay. If, you, if, you, if you go back and watch some of the old episodes of this show, I'll like, cause I just like would buy beer that was sitting on the shelf. I had like no concept of freshness, you know? <laughs> Yeah, some like import macro where like, like a uh, like ti like a uh, you know tiger lager. I think it's from uh, the Philippines or something mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. Vietnam. One of like you know just some generic lager from overseas that's been sitting on the beer shelf for like a year and a half. And I'd be like, oh, this tastes like lemon lollipop or honey cough drops. You know, like I didn't I didn't know it at the time, but like that taste is oxidation. You know. Yeah. Or like uh, what what I didn't realize at the time was tannins, you know, especially from any kind of fruit beer. Um, I'm like uh, it's like sour, but it's not sour, you know. But like right. I'm trying to describe tannins, kind of like what we were doing on the Orval episode. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. You pick up all that stuff. It's funny. I was going to mention earlier. Speaking of uh, kind of sour, it's funny. Your friend's name is Brett that works at Urban Artifacts. I know both. Yeah, Scott, right. I know I know both Scotts that are owners because they do wild and. Mm -hmm. uh, sour beer so it's kind of like they always deal with brett so it's kind of funny that his name is brett that's there yeah. <laughs> and it's also i mean urban artifact actually doesn't really do too many brett beers they're more kettle sours when they were doing brett and this when i was when we, years ago like when they first opened they were they were messing around more brett they may have switched it up some now in what they're doing but um mm -hmm. they do open fermentation all that kind of stuff there which is pretty cool so yeah on the channel like i said if you ever want to watch it there's a video where I do like a tour around and then drink their beers. The cool thing that they do is, you know, you can have sour, right? You can have sometimes where sours are too tart, where they have like these squeeze bottles of liquid at the brewery where you can squeeze them in and it takes the tartness down for you. Yeah. yeah. You can kind of customize your beer the way you like to enjoy it, which it's is funny, like, cool. The Germans actually invented that a long time ago with the Berliner Weiss, mm -hmm. where they would actually squirt syrups and like you would drink it through a straw. Oh, Here's okay. The yeah, like like they would be served like in like basically it's almost like a cereal bowl, like a Berliner Weiss, in like a cereal bowl with like a, with a straw, and they squirt basically like like you know mio, like mm -hmm. that, like you squirt it into water and it makes it you know taste like fruit punch or whatever. Oh, like okay. that's it, it's funny. It's like we think that's new. It's like you know the more things change, the more they say the same. Anyway, right. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think back well, in the day you used, to, you used to drink through a straw because they gave you a quicker buzz, but that's a yeah. whole different story. <laughs> uh, thanks for thanks for doing this podcast and the review, uh, Rod. I will put links to all your stuff in the description. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I always feel you. like yeah, I always feel like like we're just getting started. Like when when I wrap these shows, but I feel like I I try to keep them about you know an hour, maybe ninety minutes or so. Um, you know, I forgot to ask you. We still got a, we still got a minute or two before I got to go. Um, like when you're judging beer, mm -hmm. um, like for your channel, like just for fun, like what's your, what's your criteria? What's your rationale? You know, like, how are you, are like, are you judging beer? Like, cause like, I kind of like do like, uh, like theoretically like two different ratings, like one, like how much I like it. And like another one, like how much it is to style. And then I kind of like put them together, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, when I do them on mine, initially when I was doing it, I didn't. So since I started adding ratings back, like we talked before, I used to not do them, and then I was asked to do them by some of the people. So it was usually to my preference on how I actually mm -hmm. did that, right? And I had a video I did years ago about, you know, be careful following people's ratings because a lot of people will rate something like you, no idea what that rating means. They just throw a number at you, right? And yeah. so now what I'm doing, I just started this on the more upcoming videos is, is doing a little bit more of the BJCP kind of looking at the flavor, looking at the appearance, the aroma, the overall, you know, everything that you would kind of do is you were judging it and kind of giving a breakdown that way. So if I'm saying, if I'm going to look at the taste on it, well, that taste might weigh one to 12. I think this is like a 10. It's got everything there. I wish I had a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, blah, blah, blah. And then overall, then I get like a score that can add up to a 50 and I just put a decimal, right? So if it comes up to 45, I give it a 4.5. Um, but that's to my personal preference. I can have... Like this Hoptimum Triple IPA, which I think Triple IPA still isn't an official BJCP style, but no. you know it's usually ten percent or more, right? And they'll start saying triple on stuff. That could be like a five as far as a Triple IPA, but to me, on a taste, 
for my personal, it might be like a four and a half because it's not something I want to sit here and throw a bunch back. It's not something where I'm going to get crazy about it or like that. Everything is it's it's good, but it's not like to a great level where it's kind of like, oh my god, I got to get more of this. Like I've in all the the thousands of beers I've done on I tap, and I think last time I checked in on I tapped, I might have been over seven thousand beers or whatever. That's only since 2015, folks. That's not counting all the other years before yeah, that. Yeah. So, uh, I got like probably Wilt Chamberlain numbers on beers, but <laughs> I still only have probably about 10 to 11 or 12 that I've given fives to over that period of time. Because really? it has to be just that phenomenal to stand out. And I gave like one, I think it was like um, the Ballast Point when they did the Victory at Sea. That was one of the best. That, that was the best ultimate like Imperial Porter I've had from anywhere. Um, it's sad that you don't get to see that anymore, but that old ballast point victory at C was solid. I had like a double IPA. That. Yeah, yeah it, it's so good. It's just so smooth. I had a double IPA for Mantry Brewing in Cincinnati. It was their Galaxy High. I'm a big fan of Galaxy Hops, and that one just blew me away. And so I've had a few that were there. 4.5s are more common because, you know, it's always hard to give that purpose. It's like the gymnast. It's like the, yeah. the, Russian, the Russian judge, right? You can't give the full score, right? It's got to be something. It's like HR. You got to find something wrong with that person. You can't make everybody perfect. Yeah. So I, it's not a nitpicking thing. But to me, like if you're a 4 or 5 or above, you're excellent. You're a top level anyway. So yeah. at that point, it's just splitting hairs. If you, and So I tell people on my scale, like if you're looking at, a four to a five, you're very good. If you're like a three to a four, that's good to me. Like people will say, well, you like this beer, but you gave it like a three, two, five. Well, threes are good to me. You know, three, two, five is still a solid beer. It's like two is a fair beer. I mean, I have like a bud and I might give a bud a 2.5. I don't hate bud. I see people give it a 0.25. Like, come on. It not, it's not a 0.25 for a Budweiser. Obviously you're making beer that's lasted this long, but I try to be fair and everything like that. Now I've had some beers that are like a 0.75 or term. I won't say their names, but it's just like, dude, this is like wet cardboard. Don't even give this to me anymore. But yeah. anyway, but those are rare. Those are rare. I come across stuff like that. There is a, there's definitely like a difference between the mechanics of brewing with like the objective stuff of just like, I mean, basically like as long as your beer is not like infected, mm -hmm. you know, like wild yeast, bacteria, DMS, diacetyl, stuff like that. I mean, after that, it's just kind of like a matter of taste. I mean, it's really fun right. to argue taste. Um, like, uh, actually, let me show you my channel here. Speaking of Bud, because uh, on my on my show on uh, Tuesday night, whoops, Tuesday night beer school, we're going through all the BJCP styles and we're reviewing commercial beer to spec. And we did American Lager. Mm -hmm. you know, about a month ago and so we did review budweiser if you review budweiser to spec i mean mm -hmm. you're reviewing the individual bottle or can that you have in front of you but if you're actually judging against those guidelines i mean it's going to score at least a 40 out of 50 right right Unless it's like super old there's no reason to give it anything lower than that i mean that's the guidelines are written around that beer yeah so i mean it's like you might not like it but it's to score it to spec is a little bit more objective. Like my, my girlfriend, Christina is really good about that. Um, it's funny last year at, at Christmas, we did a bunch of Christmas beers for the uh, winter seasonal style. Mm -hmm. And one of the beers she absolutely hated, but we're reading the guidelines and she gave it like a really high score. I think she gave it like a, like a 45 out of 50, which is like world-class. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, as soon as we were done, she's like, Oh, just dump this. I can't drink it. It's so gross. It's like, but it is a really great example of the style, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, what makes, that's what makes a good beer judge. Yeah. And a good thing is, if you're going to do it, anybody that does the rate that I always tell is, make sure your audience knows, right? Like, yeah. if you're going to rate the style, just let your audience know, I'm rating to style. It might not be my thing, but if I'm looking at a style of the beer, this is right on point. I'm just not a beer. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Shandy's. Mm -hmm. I can I can drain pour a lining kugel with no problem. But if you ask me, does it match up to the style of Shandy? I will tell you, yeah, this is a Shandy beer. It's just not my preference to actually enjoy them. They're not They're not something that's in my wheelhouse. Well, that, that raises a good question. Is Shandy beer? Because it's technically, I would consider Shandy a cocktail because it's beer blended with like fruit juice or soda or something, you know? You would think it'd be one of those new beer cocktails, right? Like they're always yeah. pushing, right? But yeah, I, like, I mean, but they got the, the style. Original they FMP. Got the style. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta go. 
I'll get you out of here on this. this I asked everybody this. What is the plural of Guinness? The plural of Guinness? Yeah. I don't think there is a plural of Guinness. I think Guinness is just Guinness, right? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think there is a plural for that. It's, Nobody you know. knows the answer. It's either Guinness or Guinnesses or Guinness I. Yeah, I was going to say, I just think Guinness is one of those words like for... Yeah, like if you went to a bar that. and you said, like, hey, give me three Guinnesses, that sounds wrong. But if you said... Yeah, hey, three Guinness, they know yeah. to give you three beers. I don't think yeah. there's a plural for Guinness. Yeah. I am in Baltimore, and I do have the Baltimore Guinness here, so I can actually ask them, and I will check back with you to let you know. All right, <laughs> all right well, thanks for doing the show. I'll put links Thank to all you. your stuff. And uh, if you ever want to have me on your uh, happy hour or whatever, just let me know. Yeah, definitely appreciate you having me on and stuff and keep you posted on that for sure. All right. I'll see you later. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Uh, I'm not out of bourbon. <laughs> I just got the whiskey stones. <laughs>